So now we're going to play a little bit. So that's going to be very simple. So we're going to have this action, which is connected to the play button. So this one is named did press play. And if we run right now, you're going to be able to see that this is already connected to just one component for now. And we're going to complete with the rest in order to have a fully functioning spinning wheel. So if you play, you have this first component, which is spinning. We're going to do the rest. We're going to complete the animation with the rest of the components, number two and three. So we're going to go to this function. You see that we have this function, which is very convenient, that comes built in with the peak view protocol. And this one is select row. It takes three parameters. So starting with an integer that we're going to return by using this function, random number, you see very convenient. So we pass 10 as a parameter in order to return a random integer. And whichever integer is going to be returned is going to be the row number where we want the spinning wheel to be. And as you may expect, so every time you press on the wheel, on the play button, so that's going to spin the wheel and then position the wheel at this integer index position. Next, we have in component, so that's the component that we want to target. In that case, this is number zero. Finally, animated, we set to true. So the animation is going to be already performed just with this function, which is very convenient. So what we're going to do next is do the exact same thing for the other components. I'm just going to simply copy and paste and update the component one and then true. I'm going to save. We're going to stop the first building and then run again. And here you're going to be able to see that this time we're going to be able to spin the wheel for each of the component. There you go. And what else we have in that action is this if and else condition. So what we do basically is doing a comparison in order to see if in the case we have similar elements between component one, two, and three, then we would want to return a win if it's true. And then we want to indicate if you have to play again, if it's not true, if it's false. So we're going to see that in the next video lesson. So see you then. We're going to complete this part in the next video.